Dear Ms. Ox, thank you very much for your interesting letter, which I've only just received, having been away on several interconnected journeys. Now, to be honest, I have difficulty in understanding some of your assessments and ideas, not least because I have, most of all, a visual nature, being a photographer, painter, and sculptor. Well, I have little experience in auditory art. However, if you think that you would like to put together my expertise and knowledge of the Ursonata with the research you and a young scholar at the Phonetic Institute at the University of Cologne made, and the computer analysis which you commissioned gimmick, a research group for computer analysis and music also in Cologne to do using both my father's and my performance for pitch dynamic and rhythmic structure as you write I am of course very willing to help you with this we just have to formulate a concrete plan Kai Schoenberg who was a percussion student at the Cologne Music Hochschule who had perfect pitch wrote down the pitch and time values of each note enunciated by Schwitters and Angela Fuster de Ron from the Phonetic Institute at Cologne's University taught me phonetics and collaborated on the analysis of the phonetic information above the music. This is one of 60 scores that I made to do the painting. It incorporates the musical and phonetic information on the last slide of the musical score. The solid colors are pauses in Schwitter's performance, with deeper colors in indicating long pauses and lighter very valued colors representing short breaths. The sections between the colors move up and down in an inverse pattern to Schwitter's pitch changes. These directions are reversed when all fragments are realigned into the long rectangular format of the finished painting. Films balatetse u pagi. Can you understand what this means to me? But mostly, of course, what it must mean to my father. I did not manage to save his Ursonata, and now he himself, through fate, and with your help, has gained the upper hand. Isn't it a miracle? I can only feel that way. Because for me, my father never died. He continues to live in me. I've had this feeling often enough. And he can be very present, probably because of our lifelong closeness. When I helped reconstructing the bombed out and totally destroyed Merzbau, his other great masterpiece, he was there to help me. Can you believe such a thing? The image on the screen is my pencil drawing of the aforementioned work from Schwitters, his famous three-dimensional collaged room-sized installation. <clears throat> I made the drawing from three existing 1930s photographs. The colors were remembered by Ernst and given to Peter Bissiker for his reconstruction of the Meritzbau. One is permanently in the Schrangel Museum and the other travels with Schwitter's exhibitions. I use this image for the most important first theme of the Ursonata because it was created during the same decade as the Ursonata and has the same importance in his work. Each syllable comes from its own specific vertical position. The actual place determined by the pitch Schwitters has used, and the scale is determined by the dynamic value at which he spoke it. These images, cut into small pieces representing specific syllables, become subliminal information about Schwitter's cognitive space. This slide is the print made by translating the lights and darks of the pencil drawing into tiny cross-hatched ink layers to be reproduced on a large-scale Xerox machine on Mylar for the paintings under drawing. Each theme that follows will first show the pencil drawing and then the print. All 800 square feet of the painting are completely hand-painted and collaged. There is an mm till you All of the landscapes have been used have been documented as places where Schwitter spent some time. The first two movements are in Norway, and the last two are in the Lake District of England. Notice the cross-sensory association between the theme written above and the shapes contained in the landscape images. V.S. Ramachandran, a cognitive neuroscientist at UC San Diego, has shown this through his Boo Boo Kiki experiment, that sounds have corresponding visual shapes. When I put the themes together with their drawings, I was intuitively working with this principle. This image comes from high in Norway's mountains, and Schwitters was photographed looking at this view. Oh, 
I shot the, this photo, the photograph for this landscape from Molde, Norway, where Schwitters had his summer cottage on a little island at 10.30 p.m. on the longest day of the year, also Schwitters' birthday. The image was Xeroxed onto mylar both forwards and backwards so that I could alternate between the one quarter inch painted pieces in order to map the structure of a running, trailed, This is the sixth theme, which is actually part of the second movement. However, it does figure prominently in the beginning. This is also from the second movement, the Largo. This is coming from movement three, the Scherzo. This bridge is in Kirchwitter's Almanac, edited by Michel Erlhoff and Ute Brandes, <clears throat> and appears in a painting by Schwitters. Pee 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 pee, tuka 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 tuka. Finding the long lost original performance of the Ursonata by my father, I had thought that the problem of all unauthorized performances by outsiders was a thing of the past. Unfortunately, that is not so. Quite to the contrary. I've never experienced such pressure from outside interests before. There's the totally unauthorized performance, and even the production of CDs by this cellist Bloom. And then Mr. Apple has asked for permission to produce CDs in connection with his performance and his book of the Ursonata. And since I have authorized his performance as the best available, having been trained by me, as well as his book, I cannot now stop him. And just now, Miss Marianne Bernhardt from Hamburg asked my permission to publish her own CDs. Moreover, she has found that my father himself has not only permitted, but even encouraged interpretations, i.e. performances of the Ursonata, as written in his introduction of Mary. 24, or Kurt Schwitter's Ursonata. See, strangely enough, I had never noticed this. And as I see it, he's shooting himself in the foot. Nor would I have had to fight so hard for his artistic integrity all this time. Lymph, tomb, thrill. Grim, glim, glim, bim, bim. Notice the curves in the fences pictured here in England. They look like the G's in the theme as if they were mapped to the landscape. This is from the fourth movement, also in England. This wall was built in the Merz barn, still standing as Schwitters left it in 1948 when he died. It is in a remote woodland in the Langdale Valley in Cumbria, northwest England, near the village of Elterwater. The wall itself was removed in 1965 and taken to the University of Newcastle's Hatton Gallery in order to save it from crumbling. In 2006, with major funding award, the literal Arts Trust acquired the Merzbaum and are working to restore it. This photograph, the photograph for this drawing was made by lying on the ground and photographing up at the trees by the barn in the woods of Elterwater. Gra! Gra! Now let me start with telling you that I am only some 48 hours away from leaving on a practically interconnected lot of journeys, a fact which does not help very much just now as I feel unable to properly concentrate on this matter. To give you an idea of my present situation, I'm leaving on an archaeological trip to the Mediterranean on the 15th. This will last until the 4th of September. Then I will only be home for one single day, leaving for Frankfurt on September 6th to assist with the performance of some of my father's poetry at the Süddeutsche Rundfunk in Heidelberg. Back home in Oslo on September 11th, already leaving again on September 12th for a fairly long journey to the former East Bloc countries, former Eastern Germany, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, and Poland. The study tour will last until October 6th, and then on October 7th, I will have to phone and make out a date with a friend in Cologne as to when he will come and fetch me for an important stay there. Though I have many pressing things to do there, this might be the time to meet with you. But at this moment, I'm not yet sure of the exact time. It will be between October 10th and 15th. Then I'll continue on to Zurich for a most important checkup with a well-known Swiss doctor, which I had to postpone several times now, but on which my health may well depend. It hasn't been too good lately, having had three stroke-like collapses only this year. Then after that, I'll have to travel to Tessin to Mr. Peter Bissinger, the man who reconstructed the Meritzbau, to confer with him about three lost sculptures of my father, which he has been reconstructing constructing too. And then finally, I'll be free until November 23rd. So you see, now is not the time to go into the details of the Ursonata. 
This image shows both the top and bottom of the same waterfall in Norway. Eka means corner in German, and the center K resembles the way the hills pictured here come together in the image. This picture comes from the shack, also called a Meritzbau, by scholars on the island of Hertoy, which now houses a fishery museum off the coast of Molde. Schwitters cover the walls and floor with collage. I made a drawing of these images and used them for the alphabet thing. Schwitters recites the German alphabet four times in reverse in the cadenza. Fums bevete se u pegif kvie. These over here, these are the cutting and fracturing patterns of consonants, including plosives, fricatives, and trills on the far right. Um, consonants are realized through the internal image manipulation. The manner of articulation, e.g. plosive, fricative, or trill, can be seen in different cuts and or separate color inserts and the turning around of image segments. Voiced consonants are distinguished from voiceless ones by opposing directions of cuts. Each fricative has its own color insert. F is cerulean blue, Z is orange, B is violet, and S is yellow. The place of articulation of plosives, uh, B, P, T, and D, can be seen through the location of the cutting point. The voiceless plosives are cut vertically, and the right side is upended, while the voiced consonants are cut horizontally, with the upper portion turned around. Approximants H or J, or vowels that stand alone in a syllable have no internal cuts. All vocalic information is expressed through the glazing system that was used for harmonic movement and qualities in the musical paintings that preceded this. The 16 vowel sounds from the German language are arranged in a logical chart that visually show how and where they are produced in the oral cavity. I created a color chart which corresponds to this vowel chart. Unrounded vowels come from the warm list, um, from the warm list of colors on the left side of my color chart, while rounded vowels come from the cool list on the right side. Vowels made with the tongue in a high position are warmer than vowels made with a low position. Therefore, E is a greenish yellow and A is an orange yellow. Both of these are unrounded and therefore come from the warmer list of colors. Vowels produced in the front of the mouth are a pure hue. As the location of production moves backward in the mouth, there is an ever-increasing percentage of a complementary hue, which is glazed in a separate layer. Thus, while E is a pure greenish yellow, U is 50% yellow green, its base hue, and 50% red violet. And there is a 10% complementary layer for the vowel U, uh, which it looks like a capital Y, in the second column, fourth row. Diphthongs slide between the two colors as the sounds slide between two vowels. Here are four eight-foot sections from the first movement of the painting. I'm just going to play you Kurt Schwitter's voice on the first line so you can hear. To me, the Earth Sonata is an abstract piece of music. Unusual, yes. It may well be considered a collage of sound. But as a collage, it is visual art. The Earth Sonata is musical art. It is not as many interpreters see it a piece for cabaretical performance. This is why I personally am against any interpretation, although I have had to learn my lesson painfully that my father himself not only permits but encourages interpretations. I could have saved myself immensely much trouble, anxiety, and work if I had known. And I should have, since it's there in Merck's 24, which I also send you a photocopy. OK, I don't know if the sound's going to work. We're going to try one more time and listen to this. We thought it would work. Oops. Go back. Is it going to play? It's playing. It's not loud enough. It's just really soft. Now, if you say great musical pieces are performed by whoever wants to, there is a, one great difference. Whatever you say or might feel, Kurt Schmitter's Ursonata is not 
a piece of music, but something entirely new, a stroke of genius, as you recognize then and there. It is also a literary work, and therefore subject to copyright law. And as long as I have this law to back me up, which is, I believe, something like 50 years, I will stop all unauthorized performances. Full stop. Nobody can or will convince me of any other stand. I have not fought bitterly for all these years to let it crumble now just that you have found the original performance by my father. Uh, this is from the Scherzo Third Movement. And the second half of the third line and the fourth line are from the trio. As to your explanation of your method in constructing a visual or sonata, I must admit I'm not able to understand it. I've painted music myself, but in a very different, much less scientific way, more directly, more intuitively. But everybody has his own way. To me, art is intuitive, and art and science do not merge. But that's a personal view only. You have lines from the I came to Albuquerque and the University of New Mexico in 2005, and Kristen and I decided to combine our work on the Orsonata. I heard her perform it and was knocked out by her interpretation, so I embarked on a long process of cutting each syllable apart in my painting electronically, not the actual painting, and we premiered our first digital performance in 2009 in Seattle. Uh, Jack and I have toured our performance now for a few years, and we've been craving a means to add my interpretation to the sound images. So through the support of the University of New Mexico, we've identified some of the most different moments of interpretation and applied motion capture technology to them. Um, and we've also been working on a live, full dome, interactive performance that would uh, go into digital planetariums and to that end we've added to our team Jane Creighton. Jane, will you tell them a little bit about what we're up to? Sure. Um, I'm one of the technologists in a new addition to the Orsonata performance and so part of my job is to make sure and limit as many technical difficulties. Um, one of the things was this theater. This theater is a 4K theater. Um, typically this performance has been done in 1K theaters. Um, so this was a big challenge. Jack had to upgrade and rescan several, several of her slides to get it to the resolution where it actually looked decent on the screen here. And so we worked with Alex um, from the Dyna Theater who helped us and help, helped me understand the technology that I needed to bring to the group. In addition, um, we're, we're also developing a full dome Piece. We're transforming this into the full dome, so it'll be multi-projections. For those of you who don't know what a full dome is, it's a digital planetarium. Um, there's several of them around, and I work with the Denver Museum of Nature and Science and a few other um, full domes, and we are um, we're in the middle of transforming this into that immersive space um, via programming. And so I'm working with a programmer, Charles Beasley from IAIA, and him and I are programming the Orsonata. I'm developing the iPad app that will control the entire performance. So we're, we're moving away from Jack's um, wonderful use of PowerPoint. She has pushed PowerPoint to the max. Um, in the performance, she actually runs through over a thousand PowerPoint slides in less than 30 minutes. So um, if you would like to see PowerPoint pushed to the max, I told her it was truly an act of electronic art because she was using something that was not intended for this performance, creating it digital, making it happen. Um, so I th definitely think she needs a round of applause for that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's kind of where we're moving with the performance and uh, we're really excited to be working with uh, the Museum of Nature and Science in Denver and IAIA uh, to make this happen and um, yeah just looking forward to what's going to develop out of this project um, and I need to probably make sure she's working. Will you talk some more Kristen? Uh, in yeah. Well, actually, I could talk a little bit about about some of the um, 
the, the frustrating aspects which have led us to, to try and find ways that we can control the images that Jack has, has created. The way that she laid out the images in her PowerPoint slide was really about her remembrance of Kurt Schwitter's rendition of this Ursonata. And my performance is vastly different. It's probably about twice as fast, for one. Um, I don't know, maybe it was because it was in the 30s. It was way slower. <laughs> um, but, but that, as part of the aspect, my pitch is probably because I'm female, tend to be different choices that he made. Um, and I also have found moments that I, I really extend. And you'll see there's a little film that happens in the middle of our PowerPoint, which is a motion capture of my body while I'm making the sounds that you're hearing me then make um, in the space. Because that was the most different part. Her images are just these tiny little things that went by so quickly, and I'm sustaining the sound for 30, 40 seconds sometimes. So we had to find some way that we could make what I was doing and what Jack had done and what Kurt had done and blend them into something that I think we're going to get closer and closer to. As The more uh, we intervene with computers, the easier it is for us to really match what it is that's happening. And our goal is to create control um, tablets so that Jack can literally draw a line as I'm breathing that line myself. And then you'll see um, that cohesion happening up on the screen. That's the wish. We don't know what's really going to happen <laughs> in the end. Um, because technology is fabulous, and then it doesn't work. And you know, you just speak. That's all you get. Are we ready to begin? We are. Yay. So with no further ado, let's hear and see our sonata by Kurt Schwitters. Fumes volatate se you, pogi, qui, or not. So we are. Ah, okay. take two. Fumes volatate se you, pogi, qui, de desn. Fumes Rub till toe. See you when, such you uns carmu, see you when, such you rings carmu. Rocket baby. Rocket baby. Fumes, baba tate, say ooh, ooh, zitty baby, fumes. Rocket a rins, a kit a 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 bee. Bava fumes ba bava ra fumes ba ba bava ra te fumes ba ba te bava ra te fumes ba ba te te bava ra te te u fumes ba ba te te u bava ra te te u pa fumes ba ba te te u pa bava ra te te u pa ga fumes ba ba te te u pa ga bava ra te te u pa gif fumes ba ba te te u pa gif kwi rakatarin zeketa rakatarin zeketa rakatarin zeketa rakatarin zeketa rakatarin zeketa rakatarin zeketa be. Bava fumes ba bava ra fumes ba ba bava ba pa fumes ba ba pa bava ra ba pa fumes ba 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 pa bava ra te ba pa fumes ba ba te ba pa bava ra te te ba pa fumes ba ba te te ba pa bava ra te te u ba pa fumes ba ba te te u ba pa bava ra te te u pa ka fumes ba ba te te u pa ka bava ra te te u pa gif fumes ba ba te te u pa gif kwi rakatarin zeketa rakatarin zeketa rakatarin zeketa rakatarin zeketa rakatarin zeketa rakatarin zeketa be Ba 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 
baba 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 ra 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 baba ra
towards you. Rum, rum, till towards you ends. Rum, rum, till towards you ends. The students come in. Rum, rum, till towards you ends. The students come in. The students at your rims come in. Rum, rum, till towards you ends. The students come in. The students ends. The rims come in. Rock the baby. Rum. Fumes baba baba Fumes baba Rings, get the baby, and scurry. Fins, but, 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 fins, but,